You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. And welcome in the Socks in the Basement. My name is Chris Lanuti. It is the 27th of June, not only in the real world, but also in our White Sox simulated season. And the Sox are at 51 and 32, their new high water mark of 19 games over 500. And they're currently on a six game winning streak. Much of this is led by their middle of the order superstar, Yoan Moncada, hitting 336 with a 391 on base percentage, 581 slugging and an OPS of 972. Yasmani Grandal leads the team in home runs with 21, a 291 average, and an OPS of 951. Tim Anderson leading off with a 344 average and 32 stolen bases, along with the 37 swipes from Luis Robert, provides a dangerous team on the base paths. And rookies Danny Mendick and Nick Madrigal continue to show signs of good things to come. Danny's actually hitting 280 right now with an OPS of 823 coming off the bench. The bullpen is anchored by Steve Ciszek and Aaron Bummer with whips of 080 and 089 respectively. Reynaldo Lopez coming back with a better season than last year has been one of the anchors in the starting rotation. And today's starter Gio Gonzalez has led the starting rotation. 9-1, 3.01 ERA and a whip of 1.19. The A's are in town. Game number two, right now, out at the rate. Using MLB The Show 20 and brought to you by Cork and Carry at the Park. Now open at 33rd in Princeton. This is Socks in the Basement. Found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. Let's go. Guaranteed rate field south side of Chicago. The 39 and 43 Oakland Athletics. Come to town, and this is game two of a three-game weekend set against the White Sox, 51-32 and in 19 games over 500. Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Lanuti from Sox in the Basement, and Gio Gonzalez is taking the mound. 16 starts, 9-1 record, 3.01 ERA. Over 95 and two-thirds innings, he's given up 86 hits and 28 walks. That's a whip of 1.19. He's also struck out 91, so he could easily... Have a long game today, get into the seventh inning, and possibly get to his 100th strikeout of the season at this point on June the 27th. He's got a ways to go, though. Needs nine of them. That would be a big day for him, but we've seen him do it before. Ramon Laureano steps to the plate, hitting 227. Takes a ball inside, and this game is underway. First pitch at 110 this afternoon. Day baseball on a Saturday. Inside fastball catches the zone. One and one the count. Let's go around the horn. James McCann is catching today. Grandal has the day off. First base Abreu. Second base Danny Mendick, who's on a tear as of late. At short, Anderson. At third, Moncada. Gonzalez, the lefty, into the wind. Throws an inside changeup and misses two and one. 90 degrees outside. Beautiful day. Partly cloudy. 10 mile an hour winds blowing from left to right across the stadium. Two and one the Laurinato. In left field, Jimenez, center is Robert, and in right, Nomar Mazzara with two home runs yesterday. And he has been heating up as well. Count is even at two now, after that one gets across. Now a two-seamer up in the zone, fouled off down the first base line. Count is even still. Gonzalez working quickly. McCann set up directly behind the plate. He goes low with a changeup at the knees. It is fouled off to the backstop. Count remains even at two. Gonzalez in a good rhythm. Getting the ball and throwing it. Misses outside on a four-seamer. Three and two, the count is full. With Steven Piscotti standing on deck. Sox won their last game in Cleveland on the road nearly a week ago as that one swung on and missed a changeup low and away. And Gonzalez has one strikeout. And he only needs eight more to get to 100 today. So he starts off right away. Piscotti's going to come to the plate as they toss the ball around the infield. Sox won that last game in a terrible 3-6 road trip on Sunday in Cleveland and then swept the Tigers during the week, four straight games. 
They also won last night in a blowout here at the rate against these A's. 0-1 the count quickly to Piscotty. Next pitch swung on and missed. 0-2 a high fastball there. He scored nine times in his last ten games. But when he gets out, he finds his way home. Right now, though, in the hole, 0-2. We have lots to talk about in this game. A lot to explain about how the simulation's going to go after this. A swing and a miss, though, and it's the second strikeout for Gio. Admit it, when you heard me say he needs nine to get to 100, you're like, well, is he really going to get nine strikeouts this game? He's got two and two batters. Seven more to go. Something to watch for in this game today. Marcus Simeon, 310 average, 12 homers, 52 RBIs, and a 928 OPS. Man, he looked good still in the White Sox uniform with all this other talent around him. Gonzalez has him 0-1 on a swinging strike. Now a ground ball. They had a shift on, so Mendick was behind second. If there was no shift, it would have gone right to him. A base hit. The first of the game for the A's. And Simeon is on. Matt Olson, the first baseman, will come to the plate now with a runner on and two outs. You hate it when a shift is the reason why. But then again, you don't know if he's approaching the plate differently if there is no shift. Change up on the outside corner. Hits the zone. 0-1. Oh and, and Gio is starting off first pitch strike to each and every batter, and that's a good sign. Olsen hitting 246. Holds that bat straight up above the plate. Brings it back right before the ball leaves the hands of the pitcher. And then tries to uncork. Four Seamer fouled off 0-2. He has two home runs and seven RBIs in his last 10 games. This A's team can score runs even though the White Sox kept them to one last night in a 10-1 victory. The 0-2 pitch on the way, lefty on lefty, swing and a miss at a 12-6 curveball. Tailing away, Gonzalez has struck out three, all in the first inning. He only needs six now to get to 100. Seems more realistic. Midway through the first, no score. Daniel Megnan takes the mound. For the Athletics, 17 starts, 4.35 ERA, 5-3 record, and a whip of 1.48. He has 52 strikeouts to 32 walks. He also has a glorious 1870s-style handlebar mustache that curls at the ends of it. And when I say glorious, I mean glorious. Here's the guy with the fourth-highest average in the American League, hitting 334, Tim Anderson, and it's only the second highest average on his team as he trails Yohan Moncada by a few points. Megden has a very interesting windup. He stands straight up facing the plate. He then dips low, changes his entire body to go parallel. Now, the way that most pitchers start, in the middle of his wind, a back kick, a front kick, it is quite a process. I would imagine you can steal a lot of bases on him. Unless he really shortens that up, but I imagine he does. But it is so involved. Once again, he just stands there with his legs spread apart, both right at the rubber. He's got both feet on the rubber when he starts. But standing straight at the plate, not sideways like every other pitcher you've ever seen. And not until he's about halfway through does he actually have his body turned sideways to throw. And he's 3-1 now to Anderson. To start off this at bat, Danny Mendick stands on base hitting 280, the highest mark of the season for Danny, who has been on an absolute tear the last couple of weeks. And even though Nick Mandrigal has been a magician many times at second, his 230 average may be the reason why Mendick's getting another start today at second. 3-1 pitch inside, swung on and missed. Now Anderson loops this one into center field, and he's got a full count base hit, now bobbled in center by Laureano. He will not advance the second, and it's always shallow. He's too busy celebrating on first base, telling his team, let's go. So the leadoff man aboard with a base knock right away, and the Sox are in business. And Mendick will come to the plate now. He's hitting 280 with six homers and 20 RBI. And here's a guy who figures to be a big deal in the 60-game season that will be starting on the 23rd or 24th of July. Unsure whether or not Nick Mandrigal is going to break with the team, Rick Hahn saying yesterday to members of the media that right now 
Mandrigal's not on the 40 man as this one's grounded down the third base line. Great play made by Chapman. Around the horn they go. Five to four to three, and he made his throw in foul territory behind third base to start that one. And two very quick runners immediately erased on the first pitch. Anderson didn't even get a chance to try to steal. So two gone now, and here's the number three average in the American League. Juan Moncada hitting 336, 14 homers, and 46 RBIs. Stands in the left-handed batter's box now with two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Getting back to Mendick and Madrigal. Madrigal's not on the 40-man roster. So even though there's going to be a 40-man roster and another 20 guys that will be considered to be the core players, like the players that you can, the player pool that is a team you can choose from. The rules don't change. They're not taking 40 guys on the road. As a high outside four seamer hits the zone already 0-2 to Moncada. The rules are not going to change here in the shortened season when it comes to the 40-man roster. But the only guys you can use for trades, the only guys in your player pool are 60. You don't have your entire minor league system. Swing and a miss, and Moncada goes down on three pitches. So Mengden gives up a base knock, a fortuitous double play, and a strikeout. And after one, there's no score. Chris Davis, we didn't see him yesterday, stands in the right-handed batter's box, hitting 222 with 20 home runs. He leads his team. He also has 45 RBIs and a 7.78 OPS. The man can hit. Gio Gonzalez, the lefty, toes the rubber and into the wind as McCann sets up on the inside. They miss there. Two-seam fastball, 1-0. He is one for seven lifetime with two strikeouts against Gio. Back to the point I was making earlier. So this is how this works. Every team has a 60-man player pool. So... It's not like all 60 are traveling around. Those that have an opportunity to make the team will be at spring training. Sounds like it'll be a little bit over 40. And then about 15 of them are going to immediately go to the alternate site that the White Sox are going to set up for guys that are not going to be on the Major League roster. Mandrigal's going to be one of those guys, I think, that goes to spring training, but there's no guarantee he gets added to the 40-man roster. He would need that if he's going to end up being one of the 30 that get to break camp. Teams will start with 30 as Davis takes a walk on four pitches. And Matt Chapman hitting 299 will come to the plate. So the first time we've seen inaccuracy from Gio Gonzalez. And the leadoff man is on. This guy's slugging 500, just under 900 in his OPS. Runner on first, no outs here on the top of the second. Gio delivers an outside changeup that misses 1-0. His last 10 games, Chapman, 12 for 37. That's 324 when you're talking batting average. Not a lot of speed on first. Davis does not run very well, but a high four-seamer and already 2-0. and And Gonzalez, with the pinpoint accuracy, who struck out all three of those that were outs in the first inning, now cannot find the plate. And needs to reel it back in, and James McCann, hopefully... We'll figure this out with him very quickly. Now he misses on the inside corner with a changeup 3-0, so he's thrown seven straight balls to start off this inning. Gonzalez, he has these moments. There's a reason why his pitch count is always very high, but when you look at the record, the whip, the ERA, he gets out of these jams. But he misses inside and he walks in, so eight straight balls. They're very close pitches, but they are outside of the zone. Gonzalez is trying to widen the zone in the process. He's put two guys on. And Chad Pinder is hitting 230 with five homers and 17 RBIs, and the righty comes up with no outs in the top of the second. And runners on first and second. A little bit more speed on first, but Davis will be a roadblock of sorts. As an outside changeup catches the corner 0-1. And, and he's still trying to work the corners, even though he's not getting the calls. So Gio, with a veteran presence, he's like, I'm not bending what I'm doing. I'm going to get the umpire to start bending what he's doing. I'm going to start convincing him these are strikes. It worked there. The 0-1 pitch on the way. Just misses low. McCann tried to frame it a little higher, but it was below the knees. 1-1 one one the count. Minnesota hosting the Rockies this weekend. We had a tough time with them. 
This one lifted in the left field. It's going to be an easy play for Jimenez. One gone, and the runners will retreat back to first and second here in the top of the second. So back to this roster thing. Player pool of 60. This is the simplest way to put it, and there's more detailed things. We'll break it down this Wednesday on the full White Sox fan podcast known as Sox in the Basement. As Shelton Noose steps in, hitting 186. I'm saying his name wrong because I've never heard of him. The righty takes a two-seamer on the outside corner, 0-1. He was 1-4 for the last time he played baseball with a home run and two RBI. 0-1 pitch on the way, inside changeup misses, 1-1. One one. But you still have 40-man roster rules with the 60-player pool. It's just those 60 are the only guys you can use, unless you intend to release somebody. Swing and a miss at a changeup, 1-2. and two. So you don't have as much flexibility as you used to have, and I don't know how many trades are going to happen, because if you can't trade guys that are in your system, even if they're not in the 60-player pool, you're not going to get a lot of guys traded away. Ground ball over to second. Mendick's going to scoop it. His only play is at first. He couldn't turn two as he was running towards first base to get that one on a slow hop. Runners advance to second and third. There's two gone, and Austin Allen comes up. The catcher hitting lefty against the lefty Gonzalez. He's hitting 267 on the season. He's got two runners in scoring position here, and Gio immediately gets in the ground this one. Snagged by Moncada on a dive. Throws from his knees, and he got him. He got him. Yoan Moncada lays out towards the second base side of his position, cutting in front of Tim Anderson, who I don't think gets to that even deep in the hole, and throws from his knees in the dirt. Midway through to second, no score. Aloy Jimenez steps to the plate here in the bottom of the second inning, hitting 270 with 14 home runs. He has not hit a home run in five weeks. Mengden into the wind in the pitch. He only needed 10 in the first inning. Pitch number 11 is a strike on the outside corner. Now, Jimenez does have a five-game hit streak. Hits the ball hard. He's hitting it well, but the power has disappeared a bit. 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed, 0-2. He was off like gangbusters. I want to say he had six home runs in the first week and a half. Changeup swung on and missed, and he goes down on three pitches. One gone here in the second strikeout for the Athletics pitcher. And here's Jose Abreu hitting 280. Average has gone up. Home runs have gone up. He's got 14 of those and 53 RBIs ever since he was relegated to the five spot in the order against right-handed pitching. Still batting in the three spot most of the time against lefties. It has made an impact on his output. And a curveball high misses 1-0 the count. So now you got the 40-man roster. You're going to get the break camp with 30 during the shortened season, but it's going to reduce down. After about a week or so, it goes down to 28. Then it'll eventually get down to 26. Everybody keeps hearing about this taxi squad. Taxi squad is three players. One must be a catcher. They are the only three players not on your active roster that can travel with the team during the season. Everybody else has to be at the alternate site, which will likely be very close to guaranteed right field. Now, only the catcher on the taxi squad can actually be with the team when they're at home. He can serve as a bullpen catcher. The other two have to go to the nearby location with the other guys from the player pool that are not on the active roster. It's a base hit up the middle for Abreu on a 2-1 count. There's one on here with one out at the bottom of the second inning. Once you wrap your head around that, you start to realize teams can play this a lot of different ways. Who are you going to put who's not on the 40-man roster in those 20 spots in the player pool? You still have to add them to the 40-man roster for them to be on the taxi squad or to actually, actually to come onto the active roster. So for them to join the active roster and be available on game day, they'd have to be added to the 40-man roster. Somebody else would have to be released from the 40-man roster, which means now they pass through waivers. So it'll be very interesting to see who, who shows up there. I mean, Andrew Vaughn and, and even, even our, our new pitching prospects, all likely to be on that squad, even though they probably won't make it onto the team this year, so they can get work in. So how many of them are actually available to join the team, and how many of them are just there so that they can develop? 
That'll be the choice that Rick Hahn has to make. As Edwin Encarnacion hitting 262. He's one and two in the count with a Bray over at first. One out here in the bottom of the second inning. Mengden looks in and the pitch. Inside strike taken, a slider. Edwin regrets that one. Third strikeout for Mengden. And there's two gone. Abreu still on first base. White Sox have two hits in this game, but nobody has advanced past first. With two outs here in the bottom of the second, and James McCann comes to the plate hitting 339 in limited action as the backup catcher. And every once in a while as a DH. And a high four seamer misses 1-0 the count. This one chopped down the third base line into the tarp, 1-1 one one the count. McCann one for four with a home run in his last game played. The 1-1 pitch on the way. Low changeup, but called a strike. Surprising calls right at the knees. I don't think James appreciated that one. Now Mengden's going to take his time out on the mound and profile with that glorious handlebar mustache. In fact, you can't even call it a mustache. You have to call it a mustache. And it is glorious. I have a man crush on that mustache. Now he gets back to the rubber. The pitch on the way. Inside misses on a two-seamer, two and two. He takes a lot of time between pitches. So Danny Mendick's going to probably make the roster. And we think here at Sox in the Basement, he should be the starting second baseman. We think Leary Garcia should be moving around. And Mendick should be the everyday guy. You could still get Garcia pretty much a, a, a into the game almost every day, if not every day. But he's so versatile that you can use him in the outfield. Why not let the other kid sit at second? We did start with Garcia at second base, just like Ricky Renteria indicated would probably be what happened, we thought, with what was going on in spring training before the shutdown. Count is now full to McCann. But you kind of hope you're going to see some new things, including Michael Kopech and Carlos Rodon ready to go opening day. And that's the indication they may be there. Swung on, lifted in the right field, can of corn. And that's the third out of the inning. So after two, there is no score here on the south side of Chicago. And the top of the order coming up for the second time for Oakland. Top of the third inning, it's the family waterproofing solutions third inning. Ramon Laureano is going to get his second at bat. He's 0 for 1, struck out in the first inning. Three strikeouts in the first inning for Gio Gonzalez. And that pitch is high, 1-0 the count. 32 pitches through two innings for Gio coming into this one. Outside fastball call the strike, 1-1. One and one. Family Waterproofing Solutions is family-owned, female-owned, and veteran-owned. A portion of the proceeds go to veteran and first responder organizations are covering pretty much all of northern Illinois and northwest Indiana. And they're located in the southwest side of Chicago. They have great reviews. Look them up. They also give you free estimates on the phone, video chat, in person, whatever you're most comfortable with, with safe and reliable measures to take care of anything you need. With your foundation, seepage, water leaks, sump pumps, window wells, Concrete all out of whack around the house. You name it, they do it. That one's flying out to Jimenez for the first out. Make sure you check out Family Waterproofing Solutions. And mention Socks in the Basement for amazing deals. Hear about the offers. In some cases, 20% off on the job. Steven Piscotti comes to the plate 0 for 1. With one out now here on the top of the third. And details on Family Waterproofing Solutions coming up after this half inning. Four Seamer fouled back, 0 1 the count. Geo quickly into the line, and this one is lifted deep in the right center field and tailing back quickly. That one is up and over for a home run into the visitors' bullpen. Piscotti hits it 400 feet out of here at 102 miles per hour, and Geo makes a mistake. Piscotti takes him Apo in the right center field, and it's a 1 0 Oakland lead. Remember, though, they led 1 0 yesterday. We put up 10. Sox in the basement has a big week planned for you, and it starts with tomorrow on Sunday. Instead of the broadcast of a simulated game, it's our first ever simulation fast forward as Marcus Simeon comes to the plate. One for one with a single in the first inning, and he's quickly 0-1 in the count with one out in the top of the third. The fast forward simulation tomorrow is going to finish off this series and then is going to work its way all the way until the 20th 
actually through the 20th of July. This one flied out in the right field, can of corn for Mazzara, two gone. High fly ball, didn't get very deep. So there's two outs here in the top of the third, and Matt Olson comes to the plate. The lefty's 0 for 1 with the strikeout in the first inning. 0 for 2 on the series. So we're going to do about a month. And then, after you've digested that show, on Tuesday, we'll have a simulated ball game of Sox, Cubs, at Wrigley on the 21st of July. And Carlos Rodan will make his debut. Now, where he is going to fit in the rotation, we will figure that out tomorrow. This ball's down the line, foul, one and two from Olsen. And then on Wednesday, Dave joins me. Socks in the basements, regular 30 minutes of socks, for fans by fans, the podcast. And we'll also welcome Joe Binder from Socks on 35th, who has been covering the simulated season all simulated season long since opening day. It's been a great partnership. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about what we've learned so far and what might happen in the next couple of weeks. Swing and a miss. Geo sits him down. The inning is over. But he gave up a solo shot, and the White Sox trail 1-0 midway through the third. Foundation issues not properly handled can be costly. Family Waterproofing Solutions is owned by Ken, a veteran of the United States Marines, and his wife Maria, making them a veteran-owned business and a female-owned business that will diagnose and repair wet or leaky basements. And while they're located on the sock side, Family Waterproofing services the entire Chicagoland area and Northwest Indiana. And now after taking time off to ensure they can do things safely and securely for you, Family Waterproofing is back in business and doing jobs. Plus part of the proceeds for every job that they do are donated to veteran and first responder organizations to support our frontline defenders. And currently, Socks in the Basement listeners have access to special pricing when they contact Family Waterproofing Solutions now, 708-330-4466, or visit them today at FamilyBasementWaterproofing.com. Bottom of the third inning, Mengden only needing 28 pitches to get to this point, and Nomar Mazzaro, the eight hitter, seeing him for the first time. Sitting 218 with eight home runs. Two of them yesterday. He went two for four, two homers, two strikeouts, three RBI. And an outside changeup catches the lower part of the zone. 0 and 1 the count. The lefty has been coming around as of late and is getting more playing time. This one chopped down the third baseline. Fair ball. In the left field, Mazzara coming around, heading for second. The throw's going to come in. He is safe on a slide head first before the tag. And Nomar Mazzara, with his 12th double of the season, leads off this inning and stands on second base. Puts that down the third base line. There was a little bit of a shift on. If they're playing straight up, there might have been a play made by Chapman. And Luis Robert comes to the plate, hitting 222. Has shown some power. Over the last week, he ate Detroit alive. And a high-cut fastball called the strike 0-1. Mazzara leading off of second. The 0-1 pitch on the way. Swung on and fouled back quickly 0-2 is Robert. Now here's a guy I expect to be standing in center field opening day. And you just hope he can jump on some pitching early. In a 60-game schedule, maybe teams won't figure him out, but but he also might not figure it out like he hasn't here. Swing and a miss on that one. He's down on three pitches. You hope we're wrong about his start. Tim Anderson comes to the plate with the runner on second and fouls off a cut fastball, 0-1 the count. So you get the leadoff double. Three-pitch strikeout of Robert. Now Anderson 0-1. Sox can't be too anxious here. You have to find your pitch up there at the plate. Change up low and inside. One and one the count. Robert was anxious. He reached on the third one. That would have been ball one. He hasn't done that a lot over the last month or so, which is the reason why we've seen his average go up about 30 points. Inside change up misses. Two and one now the count. So if you're wondering, Rodon game in July, what happens next weekend? This one is rifled over to short. 
Simeon's going to suck it up and send it to first after looking back Mazzara. So you get the leadoff double. And now two outs, and he's still sitting at second base. Danny Mendick, who's three for five with a home run and an RBI in this series, 0 for 1 in this game, comes to the plate trying to pick up his teammates. First pitch, a slider on the inside corner called the strike. Very good accuracy today from the A's pitcher. Now a changeup goes right down the middle, 0 and 2, taken as a strike. So next weekend, what's going to happen? Well, Friday is going to be our second simulated fast-forward show. And it's going to take you from July 22nd through the 4th of September. It's going to be a long show. It's going to be well over a month. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you will get Sox Twins at the beginning of September, where we think there will still be quite a race going on. Low outside slider misses 1-2 and two now. So that's what's coming up next weekend. On Tuesday, if you love the simulated games, you get Sox Cubs with Rodon. And on Saturday and Sunday, you got Sox Twins in September. And you also have the fast forward shows tomorrow and next Friday that will jump you around to that point. Swing and a miss on an inside fastball. And Mendick's down, and that's the end of the inning. So a leadoff double is stranded at second base. The Sox have three hits, one in each inning, and trail 1-0 after three. So far, we're in a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel in which a solo home run to right center field is the difference. Starting off the top of the fourth inning, Gio Gonzalez sitting on 46 pitches, and Chris Davis with a walk in the second inning on four pitches comes to the plate to lead off here. He also led off that inning. And an outside 12-6 curveball misses 1-0. It's funny, Gonzalez has not thrown him a strike yet today. And Davis is 1-7 for seven with two strikeouts against Gio. But he's still being very careful with him. Now he gets in the swing at a changeup low and away that was not in the zone and gets in the reach. Quickly, pitching, another one outside, reached at, and fouled off. So he has not thrown a strike to him this time. But he went for two of them, one and two the count. Now Gio puts one in the dirt. He holds off two and two on the check swing. So maybe that's how he gets Davis normally. He gets him the reach. Can sets up inside. This is a jam shot pop-up behind second base. Mendick will call off Anderson and make the catch. And there's one gone here in the top of the fourth inning. Toronto leading six to nothing over the Angels at home. Baltimore leading one nothing over Detroit in Baltimore. Matt Chapman to the plate, the righty, swings and fouls off a four-seamer on the outside corner. Owen won the count. Won the gold glove last year at third base. They had the first base gold glove and the third base gold glove on this team last year. Olsen had the gold glove at first. The 1-1 pitch fouled off. He jammed him in on the hands. Goes behind the plate, one and two. One out top of the fourth inning. Gonzalez gets in the foul off a changeup, low and away outside the zone. He reached for it. Count remains one and two. And now he swings and misses at a changeup. He was also outside on that one. Fifth strikeout for Gio Gonzalez. He's four away for 100 on the season to date. Here on June the 27th. Chad Pinder comes to the plate. 0 for 1 with a fly out in the second inning. And a strike. Down the middle, a change up at the knees. Taken 0 and 1. This schedule that we're going to play is going to be very interesting. 10 games against everybody in our division and then... We're going to play 10% of our game against the Cubs, which I don't understand. I don't understand why that should matter so much. Talk to my buddy, who's from Minnesota. He's a big Twins fan. And he was laughing at me. I said, you're going to get the Brewers for six games. He goes, what do you mean? I go, they're going to have to even it up. So I'm sure they're going to make rivalries up on geographics. Guess who you're getting? Unless they decide to give you the Cardinals. And then he realized how stupid this was. Two and two the count. The pitch on the way. Lifted down the third base line, hooking foul. Count remains even with two outs here on the top of the fourth. Nobody on. 
And Gio Gonzalez at 61 pitches, trying to finish out the fourth inning. And a fastball away is fouled off down the first base line. Count remains even. And then how do you divide up evenly 14 games against four teams? The Pirates, the Reds, the Cardinals, and the Brewers. As the four seamers fouled off, I almost forgot about the Brewers. How do, how do you divide that up evenly? So in a very short season, you're not going to have an even schedule. And it's very, very concerning to me. As a fan, it should be to you as well. Binder swings and misses. And another strikeout for Gonzalez. Six on the game so far. Midway through the fourth, one nothing. Oakland. Juan Moncada's 0 for 1. And he'll lead off this inning. Mengden sitting on only 43 pitches to start the fourth. The bottom of it throws an outside four-seamer. 1-0 the count. Moncada's 3 for 7 against Mengden with a double. He goes into that big, long wind in the pitch. Inside pitch, fouled off. High pop-up down the third baseline. Luckily, nobody's going to get to it. They were giving chase. There's a shift on for Yuan, something that he has broken up all year long. In fact, I don't remember this happening very much to him in real life. But I would love it if teams did this to him when he's in the left-handed batter's box because he loves to put the ball down the third base line. This time, though, he grounds it to short where the third baseman Chapman is standing. He throws it across, and there's one gone on the 5-3 putout because it was the third baseman standing over it short on the shift. Jimenez is 0 for 1. He struck out on three pitches in the second inning. Average at 269. Just basically goes from like 269 to 270 throughout every game that we watch him. So he's due for a hit. And a high four seamer called a strike 0 and won the count. He only went 1 for 4 yesterday with a single, a hard hit ball. But like I said, not the power that we expect from him. Outside pitch fouled off down the first baseline 0 and 2. So he's seen Five pitches, and all of them have gone as a strike one way or another. Banged it into the wind, and a low slider misses. He takes it, one and two the count. This will be the 50th pitch for the Athletics pitcher. He kicks and delivers. Outside pitch fouled off a cut fastball that Jimenez chased. Count remains one and two. Because, you know, if I get to pick which uh, National League Central teams I want to play the most games against, if we have to even this up where we only play some of them two games and some of them three, can we please play the Pirates three times instead of two? Where do I sign up for that? It's just a ludicrous schedule. Every time Major League Baseball, you think that, oh, they're finally figuring this out, they do something stupid. This entire process has been dumb ever since the shutdown in March. The shutdown was necessary, but everything they did after that was dumb. You know, I find it funny that baseball front offices think they're all geniuses and people in baseball think they're the smartest people in the room. They don't seem that way, do they? Feels like a lot of us would do just as good. That's a base hit in the left field. And two bounces, gets into the glove of the left fielder. And there's a runner on. Nice hit for Jimenez. And Jose Abreu comes to the plate one for one in this game. He's got a Loy on first. With one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Sox have had a hit in each of the first four innings now, but nothing more than that hit. Mengden is spreading them out. I'll tell you right now, he's having one heck of a game, and so is Gonzalez, who just made a mistake pitch to Steven Piscotti. High outside four seamer. Count is even at one. 24 doubles for Abreu on the season. That's third on the team. This team leads all of the majors with the most doubles hit by a team to this point. Inside pitch, check swing. He did not go. Two and one the count. The Red Sox leading the Cardinals two to nothing. And you know, as I go through these scores at the bottom of the screen, I will tell you this. I'm very disappointed we don't get to have games against the Astros this year. I was ready for that. I was trying to figure out how to make little fold-out socks in a basement trash cans you could bang on that you could get into the ballpark and then they would kind of like open up like a nylon thing, make a little bit of noise. But it's all for naught now because we don't get to play him. Then again, maybe we get him in the postseason. Oh, uh, forget I said that idea. I can almost name the podcast that's going to steal that one. Three and two the count. The pitch on the way. Inside pitch misses and he walks him. 
So Abreu goes down the first, and for the first time all game, the Sox have two on with one out here in the bottom of the fourth, and Edwin Encarnacion comes up 0 for 1. Encarnacion has actually played so much better, hit so much better against lefties than righties this year. But it's hard to take his bat out of the lineup. He still hits home runs pretty much down the middle, but the average drops like 80 points against the righty. The one-out pitch, low and away misses. 1-0 the count. He's hitting 305 with runners in scoring position this year. Jimenez leads off of second, Abreu off of first. The fans buzzing for the first time, really all game. Swung on and fouled off down the first baseline. It was a fastball in the zone, up and in. Count is even at one. A lot of folks getting up behind the plate right now, cheering him on. Inside pitch misses, 2-1 and one the count. This whole idea of fans in the stadium during the shortened season, you're going to hear a lot of people poo-pooing it. But imagine if the lower deck wasn't even getting used. And a lot of those fans are standing in private groups. Fan deck, kids zone. Don't use the kids zone as an actual kids zone. Use it as an area. Or like a family can stand up there or a couple of people. Like some can sit on one side and some can sit on the other. Imagine spreading people out on the upper deck using the 300 level. That is spacious. It already has the waitress service. And all the skyboxes. I'd like to see some folks inside the ballpark. And you can do it safely, I believe. With all those entrances, with a rule that says if you remove your mask, unless you're at your seat or in your designated area, you'll be removed from the park. Trust me, it'll work. 2-2 pitch fouled off. It'll be a lot safer than some of the other things you're allowed to do right now. And you're going to be outdoors. And I say play all the games in the daylight if you're going to do it. You have fans in the stands, they're day games. A high cut fastball, 3-2 and two the count. It's full now to Encarnacion. Runners on first and second with one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Counts full, two on, one out. Mengden checks the runner and delivers. Outside pitch fouled off. He's protecting there on an 89-mile-an-hour two-seam fastball. Eight pitches so far this at bat for Edward Encarnacion. Into the wind and the pitch. Swung on and driven deep. Down the third baseline. Foul ball. He just misses that one. He stood in the batter's box and watched it. And we had to watch to see if that ball was going to get out. It just misses. Count remains full now. An inside pitch almost hits him, and he walks. So we'll take the walk, and the base is loaded. So close to a three-run home run. Edwin thought he had it for a moment. The moment he put his head down, I was like, oh, no, maybe not. But he did just torch that one. It was way back. I believe it hit the concourse looking at it. But it was not on the right side of the foul pole, and James McCann comes up with the bases loaded 0 for 1 on the day. Not a lot of speed on the base paths. You got the, got the base cloggers out there right now, and you got McCann. Swing and a miss at a pitch down the middle, and here's Mike Fires warming up, and all he was was gasoline on a fire yesterday. Don't they have anybody else that can pitch? He's out there warming for the A's, and Mengden's up to 71 pitches here in the bottom of the fourth. This seems to be the moment the Sox could jump on the A's. And a high inside pitch misses, 1-1 one one the count. Mengden was really in control early on in this game, and he could get a double play and get out of this very quickly. You've also seen him mow down the White Sox with a runner in scoring position earlier on in the game. And no outs at that time. A low fastball misses, 2-1. and one. And now, now he's kind of, doesn't he have the same demeanor on the mound that he had earlier? He's making faces, he's pacing. He is a rattled pitcher, is the only way I can describe him. Sacks packed with socks. And an outside cut fastball catches the corner taken by McCann for a strike. Count is even. Two and two. One out. Bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Swung on and lifted in the left field. It may be deep enough for Jimenez. He is going to tag and head home. The throw comes in. It is not cut off. He is safe. As the throw was offline up the first baseline a little bit. He slides in without a tag near him. And this ball game is tied. So McCann with the sacrifice fly. Abreu remains at second. Encarnacion remains at first. And Nomar Mazara comes to the plate. He's one for one. He had two home runs yesterday, a double earlier in this game. The kid has started to figure things out a little bit. The average up to its highest point of the season, 222. I'm not kidding. 
222. That's his high water mark. If you just ignore the first week or two when they're trying to figure out what their averages are. But I think he pretty much started off below 200 right away. Cut fastball outside. 1 0 the count. He's got a lefty on righty matchup. He thrives in those a lot better than he does against lefties. We have not seen him bad against a lefty in a long time. A low inside fastball misses 2 0. And that philosophy is paying off for the White Sox offense. So he's quickly 2 0 with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll see if Megnan gives him something to drive. The pitch on the way. Right down the middle, 95 miles an hour, and he took it. And Mazzara is probably thinking to himself, I really should have gone for that one. But he's also trying to be more patient. You understand it. 2-1 the count, the pitch. Swung on, lifted into center field. This isn't going anywhere in particular except for into the glove of Laurinato. Canicorn, third out. The Sox load him up with one out. They do get one run. And we're tied up after four at one here at the rate. Gio Gonzalez sits on 65 pitches going into the top of the fifth inning. For the first time in this entire game, after the completion of a full inning, he has less pitches thrown than his counterpart on the A's. And Sheldon Muse, who's 0 for 1, checks up on a low changeup called the ball, 1 0 the count. It was acquired from the national system in 2017. Now an inside four seamer misses. Close pitch, 2-0. The name of the game for Gio is throw him across the plate here. It's a ground ball up the middle. Anderson cuts across. Nice play, and he throws him out by a step and a half over first on the slow chopper up the middle. Tim Anderson with a great defensive play. And there's one gone. And a swing and a miss at a two-seamer on the high inside portion of the plate. Starts off the next batter at 0-1. That batter is Austin Allen. You're in the DP3 Tech fifth inning. DP3 Tech is that's a swing and a miss. Partner with Microsoft. And they came up with a way for you to work at home, work on the road, work in the office. Everybody in the company works together. One button, people are on the screen. One button, you're able to show things and share things. Swing and a miss, seven strikeout for Gonzalez, two away from 100 on the season. And if you laughed at me in the first inning when I said he was fully capable of doing that in this game, are you thinking again? That's all I'm asking. Are you thinking again? Ramon Laranado comes up. He's over two. He has a strikeout in this game. Gonzalez up to 71 pitches here with two outs in the top of the fifth and a 1-1 ball game. Details on DP3 Tech coming up here midway through the inning. Impress your boss or impress your employees. Small or large companies. A south side company making things better during these times for people nationwide. And we're happy to have them as a part of the Sox in the basement family. That pitch misses outside, 1-1 one one the count. Gonzalez now throws an inside 12-6 curveball that misses, 2-1. and one. I'd be surprised if he plays around here with this batter. He's been able to get him. Swing and a miss on a changeup now, 2-2. Two and two. He came back inside the zone. No reason to give him any favors. He has not shown you that he can do very much with what you're throwing today. Gonzalez goes high with a four-seamer. He does not offer at it. Count is full of three and two. And I would like to see Gio stay in the zone here from this point on. Don't get cute. Dare him to hit it. Swing and a miss. He got him on a two-seamer. Outside corner would have been borderline. Gio Gonzalez has eight strikeouts. And we're midway through the fifth. New challenges bring new technology. DP3 Tech has partnered with Microsoft to make things easier on you and your business. Imagine being able to get everybody together in a nice, easy, user experience friendly meeting room and being able to share whatever you want in the room with just one click. You can migrate from old legacy on-premises equipment right now to flexible, secure, work from home friendly cloud services. Bring your group together faster, better, easier. Find out what DP3 Tech can do for you. Contact their cloud migrations team today, 312-896-2450 or email info at dp3tech.com. Mike Fires is gonna start off this inning or the bottom of the fifth. Second appearance in two days, 34 of them so far coming into this one. White Sox hit back-to-back home runs when they welcomed him 
into the game yesterday as part of a back-to-back-to-back moment out here at the park. Luis Robert will lead off against him, the nine hitter, before we get to the top of the order with T.A. Robert has three RBI in his last four games. Takes that pitch low for a ball, so obviously fires. Beloved by his manager, even after yesterday. He's back out there again today. Inside for Seamer, taking for a ball 2-0. and oh. Now, the way that fires being used here is the way that the White Sox might use their pitchers in the shortened season. Ricky Renteria telling members of the press in the last 24 to 48 hours, that's a strike on the inside corner, that he has seven pitchers with Rodon and Kopech, along with Lopez, Gonzalez, Keuchel, Cease, and Lucas Giolito. It's an inside four-seamer called a strike two and two. And he said, yeah, we have those two guys. I also have five starters already. This is going to be a competition. And they may go to a six-man rotation. They may say, if a guy's not doing well, We're going to pull a guy out in the second or third inning and bring in another starter like you have two of them in reserve. Ground ball to short. Roberts thrown out by a step and a half at first. 6-3 put out. There's one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here comes T.A. His OBP is 368. His slugging is just under 500. He's one for two in this game. Renteria, the thing that was most exciting about that quote is he goes on to say, that for the first time ever, this is not a marathon, it is a sprint. Which seems to indicate he will be managing very differently than he would in the regular season of a normal 162-game season. As the second pitch here has popped straight up, first baseman Olsen comes over, makes the catch. There's two gone here in the bottom of the fifth inning and fires, having much more success this game than he did last game against the White Sox. Danny Mendick comes to the plate 0 for 2. With two outs here in the bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 game. And he pops this one up immediately to first base. It will also land in Olsen's glove and foul territory. And quickly, the Sox go down 1-2-3. We are through five. Tied up at one. Six hits between these two teams. Here at Guaranteed Rate Field on Sox in the basement. Steven Piscotti, one of only two hits that the A's have in this game. It was a solo home run to right center field off of Gio Gonzalez. He's one for two. Gonzalez on 77 pitches. Gets him the ground this one immediately down the first baseline. Picked up by Abreu. He'll touch first. One pitch, one out here in the top of the sixth. So the starter out for the A's. Gonzalez continues. And here's Marcus Simeon, the third hitter in the lineup for Oakland. He's one for two with a single in the first, sitting on 12 home runs. Gonzalez, the lefty to the righty. And a low outside to Seamer. Call the ball, 1-0 the count. His 98 hits lead his team. And now a high four seamer misses 2-0. So folks, Ricky Renteria saying it's not a marathon, it's a sprint. Acknowledging that he is lucky to have seven starting pitchers. And Rodon and Kopech expected to be ready. They're not going to say it for sure, but expected to be ready. This could be the all-hands-on-deck thing that we've been talking about on Socks in the Basement since Wednesday when Dave and I had the regular show, and then I mentioned it yesterday in the live broadcast or the simulated game. Inside pitch called a strike. This count is full of 3-2 and two to Simeon with one out here in the top of the sixth inning. And if that's the case, the way you manage is very different. And if you have a taxi squad, it's really only supposed to be for covid Patients, but you could have guys being brought up, brought down from the minors because they're right up the street. It'll be interesting to see how teams use this system. That's a base hit in the right field. And so Simeon, with his second hit of the day, he's up to 99 total hits now on the season. Still one out here in the top of the sixth. And Matt Olson comes to the plate 0 for 2. But you have two guys that can go long. And don't forget Fulmer. He's actually the kind of guy who can go multiple innings, too. And I think he breaks camp with the team because he's out of options. So that's a base hit in the right. There's two on immediately now. And Gio Gonzalez is struggling for the first time all game. That's the first time you've seen him just immediately give up two hits. They're basically the same place. And they're going to come out to the mound and have a conversation with him. 85 total pitches at this point, 30 balls and 55 strikes. 
The meeting is over. And Chris Davis comes into play 0 for 1 with a walk. He hits lots of home runs. He has 20 so far on the season. He's got two on here with one out in the top of the sixth in a tie ball game. A low fastball misses 1 0 the count. If you think about who we broke camp with in this bullpen, and a strike on the inside corner, one and one. And you think about the fact that likely a guy like Evan Marshall doesn't make the team now. And likely one more relief pitcher. And even though you're going to say, well, Kelvin Herrera was terrible for us, just toss him out of there. He's going to make the team. Ground ball to first, flip down to second, back over to first, Abreu to Anderson, and back to Abreu, three to six to three. And the inning is over. Nice pitching, nice defense. And the game remains tied at one. Bottom of the sixth inning. Juan Moncada is going to lead it off. He's 0 for 2. Strikeout and a ground out. Sitting at 333. Looking to get off on a good foot here against Mike Fires, who remains in the game after coming in to start off the bottom of the fifth. And he throws a high four seamer that misses 1 and 0. So, yeah, let's get back to this bullpen thing in real life. I mean, my first instinct is that I don't know if they're going to just wave Carson Fulmer. They might. They might have to say, you know, it's only 60 games. What are we going to do with the guy? If he's not good, he's done. Could be a possibility. This one's fly down the deep left field on the run, caught at the track. Makata is out, and there's one out quickly on the first pitch. And Aloy Jimenez comes to the plate one for two. Actually, that was the second pitch of the at-bat. He takes it inside to Seamer. 1-0 the count. He's 1-7 for seven lifetime against Fires with a strikeout. Into the line in the pitch. Fouls off a four Seamer, 1-1. One one. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens because if Rodon and Kopech make the team, the two of the guys that we had, that we expected would make the pitching staff, aren't going to do it. I mean, one's going to be on the taxi squad. That's for sure. As a strike on the inside corner freezes Aloy, he goes down looking. And Mike Fires is a very different pitcher today than he was last night. And the Sox are getting mowed down by him. And Abreu now comes to the plate, one for one with a walk. And will take a high four-seamer, one to know the count with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Fires also looking for a strikeout milestone. He has 998 at this moment. So where Gio Gonzalez needs one more to get to 100 on the season, Fires is looking for strikeout number 999 and 1,000 of his career during this game at this point. And Encarnacion stands on deck. It's a 3-0 count to Abreu. Swung on and fouls back a cookie. And he's upset that he didn't get a hold of that one. Right down the middle, a straight fastball. He was just over the top of it. 3-1 pitch now on the way is high, and he walks again. So he's one for one with two walks. He's reached base all three times. Jose down to first. And here comes Edwin. So it'll be quite the competition, I would imagine, now with the White Sox. Because I expect them to keep all seven of those starters. Two of them are going to the bullpen. Aaron Bummer's staying. Alex Colome is staying, even though he didn't do well in our... In our simulation, he's staying. That's already nine. You only have four more spots. Carson Fulmer's out of options. You got Steve Ciszek, he's staying. So really, you only have three, and then Carson Fulmer out of options. Jace Fry's going to be there. So there's really only two spots, and Carson Fulmer's out of options. And Kelvin Herrera's there. So that's it, if you keep Carson Fulmer. That would mean Cordero doesn't make the team. That would mean Marshall doesn't make the team. Or you have to let go of Fulmer. One and one the count now to Encarnacion. Before, it seemed so simple. that Yeah, he's probably going to get the spot, the 13th spot, because you don't want to just let go of a draft pick. But if it really is a sprint, does Carson Fulmer get the chance to prove himself again? Or does he need to have an incredible spring? And they're only going to have three exhibition games leading into this. Swing and a miss at a slider. Two and two now the count to Encarnacion. With two outs in the bottom of the sixth. That may be the most interesting storyline of the entire new camp 
the second spring training that's happening in July. Deep fly ball, well out in the right center field. That ball's going to bounce at the track. Abreu's coming around. He's going to round third and head for home. The throw coming in. He is safe. And the White Sox take a 2-1 lead on a double by Encarnacion. His 10th of the season. It is 2-1 White Sox as he goes opposite field. And it lands on the track in the gap. And Abreu off like a shot at the crack of the bat as he should have been with two outs. Comes around and scores from first. And it's 2-1 White Sox now with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. And now at the plate in the right-handed batter's box is James McCann, and he is going to take a ball high, 1-0 the count. Byers looks in the pitch. High and inside for Seamer, misses 2-0. McCann only hitting 217 with runners in scoring position. As a pinch hitter, he has a very high average. It's, it's, it's a weird set of stats. But then again, he he's had a weird kind of season from going as the starting catcher to the backup catcher with Grandal here. Two and one now the count. I will tell you this. The amount of trade offers that the simulation receives for James McCann around the league. I'm sure the White Sox get people knocking on that door as well. High inside four seamer misses three and one. And now with the trading open and it's only being 60 games. Would this team consider the idea if something big came along before the trade deadline, moving McCann to a team that needs a catcher and having Zach Collins play backup if Grandal is not going to get worn down by a 162-game season? So many questions. We're going to have so much fun on Sox in the Basement going over all these things. I'm just glad baseball's back. That one's fouled down the first baseline. Three and two the count now as it goes into the crowd. Full count, runner on second, 2-1 Sox with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch to McCann. Swung on and fouled off into the camera well down the first baseline. We will reset. 22 pitches for Fires now. He's given up a run. The Abreu walk and the Encarnacion double and now a swing and a miss at a slider in the zone, low and in. McCann goes down. The inning is over, but Edwin, big hit. Breaks the tie. And the White Sox now lead in this pitcher's duel 2-1 to one after 6. Gio Gonzalez's day is over, so he will not get to 100 strikeouts. Michael Kopek is going to come in for his 15th appearance. He's 2-0. and oh. He's got a save. He's got 32 and two-thirds innings pitched and a 3.86 ERA. The Sox don't like to bring him in midway through the inning as Matt Chapman, who's 0-for-1, stands up there in the right-handed batter's box. He's 0-for-1 in this game, and the first pitch low for a ball, 1-0 the count. Next one down the middle, a slider at 91 miles an hour, taken for a strike, 1-1. One one. Good day by Gio Gonzalez. He goes six innings and only gives up one run on the solo home run. Got out of a bit of a jam, didn't look very good there at the end of the sixth. And the Sox saying we have a well-rested Michael Kopech out there. Let's bring him in right now. Two and one now. The count is that one misses high. The next pitch on the way. Round ball. First base side. Abreu gets it. Flips the Kopech who covers. And there is one down here in the top of the seventh inning. And Chad Pinder comes to the plate. 0 for 2. He's got a strikeout and a flyout. And again, this goes back to the idea that you will have guys like Kopech Maybe in the bullpen, or maybe you don't. I've seen so many people try to guess. And even though Reynaldo Lopez did so well on our simulation, if all those guys are available, he probably starts in the bullpen. That's the one guy I feel like probably goes to the bullpen. Then I have a lot of people saying, oh, then you'll put Gio Gonzalez out there. I don't know if you're going to do that. It might be Dylan Cease. If you have Kopech and Rodan to go with Giolito and Keuchel, it may be that they keep the veteran, crafty, lefty, as a starter and Cease can work out of the pen so it'll be very curious to see what happens ground ball to Mancata scoops throws the first and there's two gone Sheldon Muse comes to the plate he's 0 for 2 there's a reason why I don't know how to say his name unless I'm saying it right then I'm taking full credit because I don't know who he is he's one of those few guys in baseball I've just never heard of him and he takes a strike down the middle 0 and 1 the check swing, did he go around? No. 
one and one the count. It probably was a strike anyway. It was on the high outside portion of the zone. Kopech working quickly. Now gets in the swing and a miss at a changeup. He goes right through that one. One and two. Michael trying to make a quick inning here. Ten pitches only. He's got two strikes and two outs here. In the top of the seventh. Inside pitch. He does not go for it a four seamer. High and tight. Two and two. The count is even. Sox lead two to one in this game. Gio Gonzalez gave up a home run. That's a strike down the middle. He didn't even offer at it. 100 miles an hour. And that's the end of the top of the seventh. Yuzmero Pettit comes into the game with a 297 ERA over 47 games and 57 and two-thirds innings. He will take over here in the bottom of the seventh inning for the A's. Nomar Mazara is scheduled to hit. And as that's a righty standing on the mound, he will hit. Mazara, one for two in this game with a double. Takes a strike in the outside corner, 0-1 the count. Two to one, Sox. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, ground ball down the first baseline, scooped. He'll step on the bag, and Olsen gets the three unassisted. And there's one gone here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Luis Robert comes to the plate. He's the big 0 for today. 0 for 2. And looking for his first hit of the game. Pettit throws a changeup right down the middle. And for some reason, Robert does not swing or offer at it. And maybe that indicates that he's not seeing things very well today. Now a low outside changeup swung on and fouled off 0-2. We're seeing him take pitches in the zone and swing at things outside of it today, which has not been the case for the last week or so. Inside pitch taken on a changeup, 1-2 the count. That was a good take. 2-1 sacks, one out, bottom of the seventh inning. Pretty much everybody available in the bullpen. We'll get a better look at it in a moment. As a four-seamer misses high, two and two. Remember, after this game is over, go over and get the post game from SoxOn35th.com, the world-famous blog that has partnered with us. And then we have the Fast Forward show tomorrow. We're going to simulation fast forward. Should be a lot of fun. I'll sit here and take you through all the particulars, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the good and the bad. For about a month of play as we try to accelerate the season to get it out of the way before Major League Baseball actually returns. That's a soft fly ball out in the left field. It will be caught, and Robert is retired. Two gone. Tim Anderson comes to the plate one for three with a single to lead off this game. Nobody on base. Two outs, bottom of the seventh, and a 2-1 ball game. This game is still much in doubt. High four-seamer taken as a ball, 1-0. and Now a high four-seamer misses, 2-0 and to Anderson. Aaron Bummer tossing in the bullpen. Don't know if he's coming in here, though, for the top of the eighth, or if Kopech will start it off. Looking ahead at the batters that are coming up, a righty matches up a little bit better. And Michael has been lights out lately. Inside changeup, taken for a strike at the knees. Two and one the count. Good sized crowd out here today. Haven't seen the announcement, but the seats are pretty full. 90 degrees on a Saturday afternoon. And a low changeup taken. Three and one the count. Danny Mendick stands on deck. And here's the 3-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled back. A four-seamer was in the zone low. He fends that off. Three and two to count is full with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two to one White Sox. They gave up a run and then chipped away, tied it, and then took the lead. It's a pop-up to second base. Easy play made. And the Sox go down one, two, three. So the nine hitter, the one hitter, and the two hitter coming up here in the top of the eighth inning for the A's. And we're holding on to a two to one lead. Austin Allen, the catcher, is 0 for 2. He's got a strikeout and a ground out. He's hitting 264 in the season. The left-handed hitter will come up against Michael Kopech, the righty, who set him down on 12 pitches last inning. 1-2-3. And the first pitch at 101 miles an hour down the middle. He got just a little piece of it. And it's strike number one. Now an outside pitch he offers at. He does not go around. 26,913 today. 
I thought it'd be a little bit bigger by what I'm looking at, but that's the count. As a high four seamers fouled off one and two. The most the Sox can probably have is about 8,000 if they go to the 20% that J.B. Pritzker said that he would allow in phase four. Although there are some Chicago reporters trying to say that that was never said. It's in black and white. Only Lori Lightfoot is saying that you can't do that. I don't know where they're getting their information from. Maybe they need to stay off of Twitter and start actually reading things. Three and two the count. As Ramon Laureano stands on deck. The full count pitch to Allen. Swung on and missed. He got him on a slider and Kopech pumps his fist. Right down the middle he fooled him. Second strikeout for Michael in four batters. And man, imagine him coming out and being lethal. Everybody expects him to be a starting pitcher right out of the gate. What if they're not? What if Kopech and Rodon coming off of these surgeries, they say we're going to start them in the pen if the five starters look good? What if what if, if, if it's all even, they're like, let's just start them out slow, and then when there's a problem, they move right into the rotation because it's a sprint, not a marathon, as Renteria said. First pitch strike to Laurinato, and now he's going to foul off a changeup low 0-2 quickly with one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Kopech working quickly into the wind and delivers. Outside slider misses, one and two. I know the Chicago Cubs are really pressing to get fans. I find it interesting the White Sox are laying in the weeds right now, according to media reports. They're not pressing. Cubs all over the place saying, yeah, we want fans. A lot of statements coming out. Jerry Reinsdorf and the Sox organization kind of sitting back on this one. But trust me, I guarantee you a plan is being developed. Now that they know what the restrictions are, And they're looking at it as, she probably just wants a plan, let the Cubs complain, and we'll attack from the other way. Somebody's going to go with with honey, and somebody's going to go with vinegar, and we're going to see what works. 3-2 pitch on the way. Inside changeup misses. And that's a walk issue by Kopech, the first base runner he has had, with one out here in the top of the eighth inning. And Steven Piscotti will come to the plate. So Kopech has a run around that has pretty good speed. They're going to have to watch and see if they do a hit and run here. Lay down a bunt. There might be some stealing action as the A's are trying to get that run around. They have not had a lot of scoring opportunities all game. The solo home run from Piscotti is really their only offense. And quickly, he's 2-0 as a slider misses outside. Aaron Bummer likely warm in the bullpen if needed. Although Piscotti... Matches up better against lefties. This one's jettisoned down the third baseline, hooking foul, just barely foul. That was dangerous, two and one now. So Kopech now has to settle down a little bit. Let's see what McCann calls for. An inside four seamer at 99 miles an hour. Backs off Piscotti, but it's three and one now. Kopech takes a moment and delivers. Swung on and fouled off. The count will go full. So he's gone full now to all three batters in this inning. Struck out the first one. Walked the second one. Here's number three. The payoff pitch. Chopped down the first baseline foul, and he was outside the zone there. He's trying to get him to chase. He may not be able to do that again. He might hold off and take the walk. Another full count pitch. Hits the outside corner. He held off. Piscotti's angry. Kopech went right back to the same area of the plate but was at least a foot closer and got it over the plate clearly. Piscotti thinking that's going to go outside, saying if he throws me another one of those, I'm going to hold off. He threw something that looked like it, but it was a strike this time. And there's two gone here in the top of the eighth, and Marcus Simeon comes to the plate. And a four-seamer at 101 miles an hour is fouled straight back. 0-1 the count. He's hitting 313 on the season. He's 2 for 3 in this game against a left-handed pitcher. He's 0-1 here against Kopech. Inside pitch just misses the zone, and Renteria barks from the dugout. He thought that was strike 2. That pitch was close. 1-1 the count now. The pitch. Outside swung on and missed. A slider away. He reached for it. He's got him 1-2. Now you can do a lot with a 1-2 count. Fans up on their feet. A lot of them cheering here. The pitch. A high pitch laid off. A 99-mile-an-hour four-seamer up at the face. 
Kopech, we have seen him do this several times. He'll take that pitch and put it right inside on a guy and scare the bejesus out of him. Then you'll see him come back into the zone and try to freeze him. Two and two the count. The pitch. Outside, he did not reach at 100 mile an hour fastball, and the count is full again. So four straight batters in this inning have gone full. Struck out one, walked one, struck out the next. Here's a payoff pitch with a runner on first. And two outs here in the top of the eighth. And he walked him. That is a close pitch, and Renteria can be seen yelling from the dugout. He may get tossed. He is not a happy camper on that one. He thinks that's strike three. So now you got two on, and here comes Matt Olson. They're going to go out to the mound, and Renteria is going to do the mound talk, and he's waiting for the umpire to come out there. So now he's going to call to the bullpen. We're going to see Bummer come in, and as he walks away, he's going to have a conversation with the home plate umpire, and you can see him putting his hands out and bringing them back in again, and you can tell he's trying to say that ball was high enough. Umpire giving him a lot of leeway. You don't see that very often. Renteria telling his story walking now. Back to the dugout as Bummer warms up. 43 appearances, 44 innings. 2.25 ERA, 61 strikeouts and 10 walks. Righty's hitting 121 against him. Lefty's hitting 224. He has 12 holds on the season and multiple saves. And a 2-2 two and two record. And it's going to be lefty on lefty action against Olsen, who's 1 for 3. His numbers say he's better against right-handed pitching. So Bummer was in here, and that one pitch immediately jams him. Popped up to the catcher. McCann underneath and makes the catch. Bummer pumps his fist. McCann spikes the ball, and the Sox continue to lead 2-1 to one midway through the eighth. The Chicago White Sox won nine games in a row at the beginning of this month. Then they went on a slide that erased most of that progress. They've won six in a row and are going for their seventh today. And they are at their high water mark now of 19 games over 500. Going for 20 over 500. What an accomplishment it would be on the last day before we have our first fast forward of the simulation now that baseball is coming back. For the true simulation from opening day to the 27th of June to end with this team exactly 20 games over 500 in the AL Central. Cut fastball fouled off by Danny Mendick already. The count is one and two as Pettit remains in the game. Bottom of the eighth inning, a 2-1 game here. Ground ball to first base, scooped. Unassisted put out by Olsen, who has to rush to the bag to get the speedy Mendick. And there's one gone. And Juan Moncada comes up 0 for 3 with a line out in the sixth inning. And wouldn't you love it if you could get a hold of one right now and give you an insurance run? Steve Ciszek warms in the bullpen. He will either close all three, or Bummer will stay in, and he's there as a backup. Four Seamer fouled off, 0-1 the count. Pettit delivers, and this one's popped straight up. Shortstop coming in, Simeon will make the catch near the mound. Quickly two down, and Aloy Jimenez comes to the plate. One for three with a single, and a run scored. He's also looked ugly at times at the plate today. Come on, Aloy. I haven't seen you hit a home run in six weeks. Let me see one before the fast-forward broadcast tomorrow. Steve Ciszek continues to warm out in the bullpen. White Sox have been able to manufacture runs. They almost had a three-run home run from Edwin Encarnacion, but did not get it. But they put together two runs. And this fly ball in the foul territory down the third baseline is going to be caught well out in left field for the final out of the eighth inning. So hopefully they don't have to come to the plate anymore because we're going to finish this off in the top of the ninth. Two to one White Sox in a duel of the pitching staffs here in Chicago. Steve Ciszek's going to start off the ninth inning and go for the save. He's got six saves and seven opportunities, 42 and two-thirds innings pitched, and a 0.84 ERA. He took over as the closer from Alex Colomay a few weeks back and has been full speed ahead. And the sidearm pitcher throws a strike on the outside corner immediately to Chris Davis to kick off the top of the ninth inning, 0-1 the count. Sox looking for their seventh straight win after a terrible stretch in which they went 2-6 and six on the road 
The last game on the road against the Indians, they won to finish off that road trip 3-6. and six. Brown ball over to Short, scooped by Anderson. He takes his time, double pumps, and throws out the runner. And there's one gone. Matt Chapman comes to the plate, 0 for 2, with a walk in the second inning. He's hitting 297 with an 879 OPS. Ciszek takes a look in. The sign from McCann and the pitch on the way. Outside pitch swung on and missed a sinker away. 0-1 the count. Ciszek sets again with the glove right at his waist. Goes direct to the plate. Pushes him back with a sinker inside. As Chapman dives out of the batter's box. He shakes his head as he gets back in. That one was headed right for his hip. He's probably thinking to himself, I should have taken it. Gotten on base for my team. Now a pitch low and away, swung on and missed. He reached for that one, one and two. When the sinker and the slider are both working, he's almost unhittable because he mixes them up and the little changes. Get guys to reach just like that. He goes sinker in the slider. The sinker drops down. The slider stays up, both on the outside corner, both swings and misses. And that third one is the second out, a strikeout for Ciszek. Two gone quickly here, and the A's are down to their last batter. As the Sox try to close out a 2-1 to one ball game. And Oakland's going to bring up Mark Canna. He played pretty well yesterday. He's hitting 325 with 16 home runs and 49 RBIs. An OPS of 983 as the sinker misses outside. 1-0 the count. Canna probably looking for that one pitch hit a bomb moment. That's what the A's are looking for. The Sox are not going to put a guy on. Because then you put a base runner on. You put the tying run on. Ciszek has been pretty steady up at the mound. But now he's 2-0. And, oh, and we'll see what they do next. Kiana does not start normally against lefty starters. That's when they like to give him time off. With Gonzalez, he did not start today. A pitch on the inside corner called a strike now 2-1 and one, with two outs here at the top of the ninth inning. Ciszek looks in and delivers. High pitch, fouled back. Count even at two now. Sox fans up on their feet as the pinch hitter Canna stands in the right-handed batter's box. The pitch swung out and missed. He got him, and this game is over. Sox win. Slider on the inside corner, swung out and missed. Steve Ciszek, a revelation out of the bullpen. The new closer of this White Sox team. And the Sox have won seven in a row and improved the 20 games over 500 for the first time all season. The race is on for the American League Central and the wild card for this team. Both spots available to them in that race as well. Gio Gonzalez gets his 10th win of the season here on June 27th. He has 99 strikeouts on the year. He's probably going to the All-Star game. Steve Ciszek gets his seventh save in eight opportunities. And the White Sox set up the fireworks for these fans on a Saturday afternoon. And now, on to the end of June and through most of July tomorrow as we will have our first simulated fast forward of this season. Gio Gonzalez goes six innings pitched with four hits and two walks, eight strikeouts, and only gave up one earned run. A home run to Steven Piscotti. He gets the win. The loss goes to Mike Fires. Steve Ciszek, an inning pitch with two strikeouts. He gets the save. Edwin Encarnacion, one for two with a double and an RBI. Abreu goes one for one with multiple walks and scores a run. Mazzara goes one for three with a double. Tim Anderson, one for four. There were only five hits for the White Sox today. They got two runs out of it. Oakland got four hits. They only got one run. An absolute duel out here on the south side of Chicago, and the White Sox have already taken this series, winning the first two games, and will go for the sweep tomorrow. Folks, tomorrow, tune in to Sox in the Basement as we will take you through the next several weeks, including the All-Star Game, who got selected, and bring you up to the 20th of July, actually through the 20th of July. So then on Tuesday, our broadcast will be the return of Carlos Rodan in Wrigley against the Chicago Cubs. That's the deal. We're excited about it. Baseball's coming back, and this simulation will fast forward a little bit so we can wrap it up and give you a good conclusion. Post game, box score, stats to this point. All available after this game at Sox on 35th. My thanks to our sponsor, Hork and Carry at the Park, along with Family Waterproofing Solutions and DP3 Tech. 
My name is Chris Lanuti. Don't forget, as well, my buddy Dave joins me on Wednesdays as the regular podcast is back on those days each and every Wednesday as it used to be. Two years going strong now, Socks in the Basement. And that 30 minutes of Socks, oh, I can't wait to talk about all the developments and everything going on in Major League Baseball. My name is Chris Lanuti. I can't wait for the crack of a real bat, but I have enjoyed doing this. Fast forward is tomorrow. Socks win today. This is Socks in the Basement, the podcast for fans by fans. Found everywhere a podcast can be found and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. Bye-bye, everybody. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Heard everywhere a podcast can be found and always on SocksInTheBasement.com.